students, and welcome to Experiment 10, the last lab, right? So that should be exciting uh, that we're doing the, the last lab, at least the video lab, uh, for this semester in this weird uh, semester that we're having. All right, so, but this experiment nonetheless deals with polymerization reactions, all right? So forming long things, long carbon chains called polymers. All right, so that's what we're going to deal with. A couple of things as we begin. Uh, number one, again, I'll be doing the experiment as is typical, so I'll be mixing the reagents. You'll be watching, making observations, putting those down in your notebook or perhaps into a Word document as you would have typing them up. Then you're going to write a formal lab report as we've done previously, and then you'll submit that through the lab e-learning site. All right, so just like we've been doing. All right, so it's experiment 10. Uh, so let's talk about this uh, just briefly. So two parts of the experiment. Uh, the first part, we're going to make polystyrene. All right, so polystyrene uh, from styrene. All right, so this is the molecule styrene. This is a benzene ring. This is carbon-carbon double bond. This is an alkene. Using an initiator, benzoyl peroxide, uh, to help to initiate uh, polymerization. And just remembering, of course, this is, uh, would be the single barbarous, right? So this would be the radical re reaction where it encourages this double bond to break. One electron from a double bond going one direction, one going the other. And then there's a molecule right next to it, and it's going to do the same thing. And so we'll get this polymerization. So one polystyrene, one styrene molecule right next to the other one keeps reacting, a whole bunch of them in a row, and that makes polystyrene. So hence the term polymerization. All right, so making really long chains of carbon. Um, so again, the backbone basically is just CH, CH2, CH, CH2, sort of a long chain of that. And then coming off of that then would be a benzene ring. By the way, benzene ring, this is six carbons. This little circle just shows that they're alternating double bonds. Uh, it's continually moving. All right, so we're going to make one of these. We're going to see what polystyrene looks like. And this is part A, um, and I'll demonstrate that in just a little bit. Second part, we're actually going to make nylon. All right, so starting off with two uh, reactants here. All right, so we're going to mix these together. And again, noticing on one of them we have an NH group. All right, and then the other one we have this carbon double bond of uh, oxygen and then a Cl group. Right? And then noticing, of course, the little 6 and 8 indicate there are 6 CH2s, or in this case, 8 CH2s. All right, so again, these are going to react. And we'll see this making the, the, the nylon. And notice what happens, of course, is that the NH group, NH2 group, becomes connected to the Cl group. We're going to lose a hydrogen and a chlorine to make HCl. Um, and uh, so those are going to come together and form this emitted nitrogen, carbon double bonded oxygen, between these two, and this is going to be a repeating chain. All right, so since both of these are sort of bifunctional, or so they have two functional groups, uh, it's going to react here, but then react that way and also this way. So to make a really long chain, hence the term polymer again. And so again, noticing we have uh, again this NH, the CH2, then NH carbon double bond oxygen, these eight carbon CH2s here, and then this guy, and then it just keeps on repeating out. Um, in that particular direction. All right, so, uh, and by the way, that oxygen is incorrect. I'm not sure why that's there, uh, but it would just keep on going. All right, and so again, n times, that would be some fairly large number. All right, so oftentimes in the hundreds or thousands that it would just keep on going. All right, so making a nylon from this. All right, so you can think about the products that you know that are nylon, really how stretchy they are. We'll see if our particular products look like that. All right, so this is part two. So part one, polystyrene part two, nylon. So I'll be demonstrating them, and I want you to make some observations um, and, uh, and data, grab what data there is to gather and to think about uh, that, those things as it relate uh, to these relatively large chains of molecules. We'll also be getting IR spectra. This is from the last slide, uh, the last experiment, this slide. Um, this is maleic acid. But I just want to encourage you that as we get the spectra and, and put it out there, well, again, you want to evaluate, particularly from 4,000 down to about 1,500, and include that in your lab report. And then a good, a good way to do this, you don't have to, but a good way to do it is to write a table of the characteristic peaks uh, that you would find in the IR spectra, what their ranges are, and what is actually observed. All right, so we'll do this both for polystyrene and for nylon. And so again, you know their structures, and so you want to look for those particular peaks. All right, so IR is a good way uh, to measure the, those functional groups uh, that are present. All right, and so again, uh, thinking about the IR spectrum that you'll find uh, in your lab e-learning course site under uh, resources. To uh, part one, uh, which we're going to make polystyrene. All right, so as the procedure indicates, we're going to add some liquid to a small 
uh, plastic beaker. We're going to do that. And then also this time we're going to use a little aluminum pan that I found. Um, one, it's metal, different material, but then also it's got a really wider base. All right, so we're going to use a little beaker and uh, also this aluminum pan to do a duplicate experiment. So I've already uh, measured out two milliliters of styrene. So I'll put uh, two milliliters of styrene in here into the plastic one. Also have two milliliters of styrene for the little aluminum pan. Way down. And then it says to add 0.1 grams of benzoyl peroxide. So we have that. And again, I measured this out. And in both cases, it was about 0.1 more. About. So I'll add this benzoyl peroxide right to here. So the first one. Uh, mix this in. So mix it around a little bit. Get that nice and mixed up. All right. And then we'll do the same thing over here with the benzoyl peroxide into the styrene. That's in the little aluminum pan. All right, so this one might take a little bit more to mix it up, but nice big surface area, bend it a little bit. All right, so again, just the solid, what you may not be able to see is that the solid uh, dissolved right into the liquid. Be able to see that down here and then also on this guy notice that's there all right so we're going to go to the hood where we have a hot plate and we're going to heat these for about an hour okay so we're here in the hood and uh, we have a hot plate we have this little casserole dish on there makeshift and then we have some of these little wires which are going to help to hold uh, these in place so we're going to place them in here all right and they get some hot water heating up you can see some of the steam coming up out of there all right, we'll put this uh, right in there. Again, these little wires are just going to help hold these in place so they don't tip over. And we're going to start this timer. Um, and go for about, about an hour. All right, so about a half an hour in, um, we'll see that our two products we have here uh, this guy, which again, the, a lot of the liquid's gone away, and I notice it's kind of turned a little bit yellowish, as you can see if I can hold this. And then in our little plastic beaker here, uh, notice we still have some liquid-like, although it's turning a little bit thicker and gel-like as we let it heat. So we're going to put it back in here, to make sure we're uh, heating up our water there. And so in this uh, hot water bath um, and heating uh, for another half an hour or so. All right, so uh, we'll see how that uh, turns out once our full hour of heating is done. All right, so with about 13 minutes remaining, so a little bit more than 45 minutes, again, we can see our products. And again, so this one in the pan, a little bit discolored. There's uh, kind of solidified there in the bottom. I think maybe the larger surface area of the pan allowed some of it to evaporate. Um, in this particular, you can see at the bottom there's some white that's around and uh, it's really not so much liquid anymore. All right, and so this one's actually probably close to being done and we could perhaps take a look at it. All right, so we're gonna let it heat for just a little bit more. Again, it's been heating for, um, about, uh, what, about 48 minutes almost. It's down to almost 12 minutes um, here in this hot water bath and that's allowed it to react further. So down to about uh, 58 minutes here in our polystyrene. Again, looking in our aluminum pan, again, we have uh, some little bit of oil-like in this. We'll take a look at that in a second. And you can see in the little plastic one, again, um, no liquid coming out. And uh, you can see some white there on the bottom, and that's our solid. So we'll take it over to the lab bench, and we'll take a look at it. All right, so again, about 58 minutes or so was in the water bath. So let's take a little deeper look at it. We'll look at the one that's here in the plastic first. And so you can probably hear and crack that this is breaking up. All right. So compare this, of course, you know, it's asking your questions, how this compares to, say, the nylon that, we, that, we already, that we're going to do. And, of course, noticing that this one's sort of breaking up. All right. So you can actually hear it sort of crunching and breaking apart. And you can see me knocking it here onto the, to the lab bench. All right. And this is typically what we think of here. Uh, when we think of our polystyrene, all right, so uh, in forming this, unlike the nylon. So, uh, again, oh, there's our timer. Um, so, uh, we can hear, of course, that, uh, or see that uh, this is not quite the same, that's sort of broken up. 
Um, and so that's from our plastic one, which we had talked about. So you could, should consider this the main uh, product that we really want to see. If you compare it to the one that I did in here in the metal pan, notice that we have a little bit of yellow to the bottom here. And this one's a little bit more brittle, turned the color. Um, but we really didn't get as much product that would form. And I think that could be for a couple reasons. One, we had a bigger surface area. I think some of the reagents might have evaporated out. But then also because of the metal, um, it may not react quite the same. Although it is sort of a brittle, um, hard metal, or br brittle, hard plastic that's forming on this metal uh, when we're coming here. All right? So again, breaking off of it, uh, but it's a discolor. All right? So you can see those things popping up. So nonetheless, a hard brick. Uh, but the main one that we should consider um, is this one that formed in the plastic cup, and this is more typical of the polystyrene that we've gotten in the past. For the preparation of nylon, we are going to mix 5% of the sepa coil chloride uh, that, that is in uh, dichloromethane, and that's here, and that dichloromethane is also is heavier than water, so we're going to use that first. I've got 10 milliliters of it. And then on top of that, we're going to mix 5% hexamethylene diamine in water. So water of the aqueous solution is a little bit lighter, less dense, and so it'll float on top. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'll add it to this 50 milliliter beaker, and then I, I have a couple other tools here to pull up some of the nylon. All right, so first of all, we'll add in uh, the sebacor chloride. All right, it's in dichloromethane, organic solvent with two chlorines, a little bit heavier. And then, uh, for the aqueous one, I'm going to use the spatula, uh, the scupula, really, and to pour this down, all right, so we'll try to layer the water on top of it, so we're just not plopping it and it mixes, but we want to do that. So we're going to try to pour this nice and slow-like, so we can get some layering. You can see a little bit of the mixing and reaction even occurring, so I'm just slightly pouring this hexamethylene diamine and water down and you can already see some of the reaction going and so as the smoke clears so to speak uh, what you'll be able to see hopefully is that we'll see a layer a clear layer on bottom and then this mixture right here and that's where our nylon is actually forming so dichloromethane on the bottom um, and then water hexamethylene on top. So what I'm going to do with this is as we move the reagents just back out of the way here is I'm going to use this paper clip, really high tech I know, to pull up a little bit of the uh, nylon and then I'm going to start to wrap it around here and then hopefully we'll be able to continue to pull it up. Alright, so let's see what that looks like and so again uh, if you can sort of see down there I don't want to disturb it too much but I've got sort of a a bigger clip here, and so let's see what that looks like. So I'm just going to see if I can grab a little bit of this. I think I have my tips a little bit too big, so I'll try from this other end to get some. All right, here we go. So I'm bringing up the nylon. Notice the big clump that's coming up. Put it on there, and again, thinking about not handling it with your hands, not using your hands. All right, but then I will use this uh, to pull up some of the nylon. All right, so I'm going to try to keep going up here, pulling up. And so what happened is, of course, at the interface where those two reagents are meeting, sepacol chloride and the hexamethylene, they're forming the nylon. All right, so the same nylon that people make hose out of and their other things. And oop. I didn't get a lot of it, but I got at least a little bit out of there. All right, so before it broke off, um, I'll tell you what, so I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to do this a little bit more, pull this up, and so you can see uh, some of the white uh, that's there, right, so from this, uh, from the nylon that's forming. Now, I don't think we're quite done. I'm going to put that one down. That's just a little piece, and I'm going to see if I can get some more out of here. a little bit more. Sometimes we can get actually fairly long strands to come out of here. Not there. Alright, so how's that? Alright. So we have a little bit more. Let's 
coming up. Oh, that one broke too. Notice the reaction, even though um, it's not continuous right now, the reaction's still forming. All right, and maybe I was going just a little too fast, which is why we ended up stopping. So I've got a little bit more coming up. So let's see if I can pull this up. Start to roll it. Again, and I broke. Okay, so I think that's probably where we're going to end with that part of it. I'm going to unroll and wash this and unroll it and measure it and see how long it is. Um, but in sometimes in the past, we've had students get several meters of this in a length. All right, so let's, uh, so I'll be back. I'm going to wash this and then we'll measure it. All right, so here is the piece of cardboard that I had uh, this nylon on. And I washed it just cardboard and all uh, just to wash off what may be harmful there. And so again, if we lay this down, uh, what you'll see is that the first strand that I got, oop, it broke there, um, but we'll move it out so perhaps you can see it a little bit better. Um, we start right about there. We're going to get perhaps 20, yeah, maybe 30 centimeters. And these are just breaking now. So we're getting about 30 centimeters, so about a third of a, a meter. Um, and this result actually is pretty uh, measly compared to what some students get. I've had students get up to seven meters or so, one continuous strand. Um, they usually tried it a couple of times, but nonetheless they were able to get a really long strand of, uh, of nylon that comes out. Again, this is a meter stick, and so they would get seven of those in a wall length, so they would actually go up and down the lab bench. All right? But nonetheless, uh, this is what, the, of course, the nylon looks like. You probably had some experience, perhaps, with those or other things that may be nylon, nylon rope, that type of thing, so you know what it uh, looks like and feels like. Uh, but you can see that this uh, is breaking, but it, it does at least stretch a little bit. All right, so it's still wet and sort of a crude uh, formation. But nonetheless, uh, this is the formation of the nylon. And again, it's perfectly nice to handle now that uh, it's uh, been washed. Again, maybe looking right down uh, there, you can see a little bit more. We still have some reactions going. And perhaps I'll pull out just a little bit more. So you can see what this looks like at uh, the interface there. And then one of the things we're going to do is just mix the whole thing up, all right? And uh, mix all of that around. And again, you can see we're getting a fairly large clump uh, that's forming down there. All right, so this is part two. This is the nylon. And we'll see if we can get an IR spectra of a little bit of this. So as I was cleaning up, I was actually able to find a bag of our waste nylon from previous years. And you can see... Um, how this is already dried out, and so we have some of it. Um, and so you can see some of these are uh, longer strands. They've now dried up. Um, so I think this is probably one whole strand or so, perhaps, um, but a lot of it. And so, um, again, not super strong, this particular formulation of it, but nonetheless, we know because of nylon rope and other things, we can actually make it stronger. Okay, just a little bit further side-by-side -side comparison over here. We have our more brittle, sort of breaking up uh, polystyrene that's forming. So again, sort of hard. Um, and then over here, we actually have our nylon, which again, this is still a bit wet from previous, but nonetheless nice and stretchy. And so again, both uh, ultimately sort of white, got a little bit of uh, brown that's from here, but mostly a white product. Uh, this one... Uh, the polystyrene sort of white, maybe a little bit clear, uh, but nonetheless hard, all right, so it just breaks apart, brittle, and this one's a little bit more flexible and uh, stretchy, all right, so again, polystyrene over here on the piece of glassine paper, and then our nylon uh, that's over here. We've seen this before, but I just want to point out for the lab reports, uh, as you put it through for these last couple of reports, 8, 9, and 10, you really have two options. First one is to type everything, your, your name, your title, um, all of that uh, observations in a Word document or in a notes document or Google, and then convert that um, to a PDF all right, and upload that PDF. Uh, the second one would be where you could use your laboratory notebook, your hand record data, observations, and those types of things type up a conclusion, and then bring that all together in some way into a single PDF document and upload that. All right, so you get either one. But in either case, whatever you're using, you want to get that information into a PDF document and upload it by the due date. All right, so this is experiment 10, uh, the last one that we're doing, 
And I look forward uh, to doing this and helping you uh, see what polymerization reactions look like. This is one key thing that we need um, in industry. Industry uses all kinds of plastics and long chains. Uh, but then also those of you that are interested in biology, uh, proteins, DNA, carbohydrates are really all long chains of carbon and they are biopolymers. Alright, so this is very useful for a lot of students in our classes.